33. Jeremiah 33. Today I'd like to talk to you about the call of God. The call of God. I don't know if you've ever considered that God calls people, God calls us, and many times throughout our life He calls us to many different things in life. And all throughout Scripture, men and women's lives were completely changed because of the call of God. And I don't think it's any different today. I think it's very specific to what we face and what we go through in our everyday living. Um, in fact, if somebody's phone rang right now, they would probably look at it and say, oh, so-and-so's calling. You'd be able to identify who it is. And if you don't, you just push mute and don't answer because it could be a telemarketer, somebody you don't know. And uh, when it's not somebody you don't know, you probably don't want to answer. So when a voice comes and speaks to you and you're not familiar with it, don't listen. Don't answer. Because God says you know his voice. God says he's the one that talks to his sheep and he helps them to see and know and understand his voice. And if there's anything going to be more crucial in the days to come, it is the very fact that every believer needs and desperately must understand how God talks to you because if you don't, you will be led astray. The devil is crafty enough to get you deceived. He's crafty enough to turn you off the path. He's crafty enough to be able to speak in such a way that sounds good, but it not completely all true. And so it's really, really important for you and I to once again remember that God can't wait to talk to us. He has a call on our life. He has callings that He has specifically and general that He, he has in our life. And today I want to talk about how God is calling us to uh, hear what He has to say. And the Scripture verse I'd like to start off with today is this. It's a promise to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. The reason he was weeping is because the nation of Israel wasn't listening to God. They were turning away from God. But look at what he says in verse 1. While Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, of the, wor the word of the Lord came to him a second time. And this is what the Lord says he who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the houses and the cities and the royal palaces of Judah that have been torn down to be used against the siege ramps and the sword of the Lord. And it goes on and on. But I want you to notice that God wants us to call out to Him because He has a call for you. He has a reason why you're here. He has a purpose in why you and I need to call out to Him. We need to have Him on speed dial to hear His voice, to know His voice. I, I guarantee you that if I had somebody random from our community walk in the back door that you not knew, didn't know who was coming, and all they would have to say is somebody's name, and you would say, oh, that's so-and-so. You didn't have to look at them. You didn't, have to, you didn't have to see them. I guarantee if my mom walked in the back door, and she goes, Jeffy, I guarantee you that I'd say, that's my mama. Why? Because I know her voice. I know who that is. And that's what needs to happen when God speaks to you because He's going to call your name. He's going to call you. You're already born and bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus. You're already living. But let me tell you that when God calls your name, you need to listen. Why? Because He has things that He needs you to listen to. He has things that He needs you to do. And He has instructions that are specific for a day and an hour, not just to throw out any time you want. God is very, very capable of directing your life on a daily basis, and we need to call to Him because He has things that we need to know. He says in verse 3, call, call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things. Now, the only thing with this promise is this. He doesn't say when He'll answer but he just says, I will answer. 
So the problem with that is, is a lot of Christians think that when they talk to God, God's going to talk immediately right back to them. And there are times when he doesn't. There are times when you call to God. I still think back of the days when uh, I was asking God, what do you want me to do with my life? And for two and a half weeks, I called him every morning, every noon, and every evening for two and a half weeks. I can't add up the hours because I wouldn't be able to remember how much time. I just know it was a lot of time that I said, God, I'm not leaving until I hear your voice. And it took me two and a half weeks to get that answer. I called, he promised he would answer, and he did in two and a half weeks. Not right away, no inkling, not a stitch of a hope so, or this is where we're going, nothing. Two and a half weeks of just saying, God, I'm not leaving until I hear your voice. Because it was crucial that I be right in step with what God had in mind. And so all of that call was something that God called me. He told me that before, but I needed to know what steps I needed to make in order to make that calling sure. And so there's a call that God has on your life. A call can be uh, uh, in real, it, it's real everyday, ordinary call, or it can be a specific call. Um, let me just say this. You don't need God to tell you to go to church every Sunday. That's a general call from the Spirit of God. He says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. That's a call to, to worship. You don't have to tell any, you don't have to be led by God to go to church. Because it's a given. Once you sign up, you're in. If we had a drawing every Sunday, you'd all be here. You laugh because it's true. If we had a drawing for a giveaway every Sunday, I guarantee you some of you say, oh yeah, I'm going to be there for that. It bad. That's right up my alley. But God has a call for your life every Sunday. He has a calling that he wants to specifically, wants you and I to know his voice. But then there's times where God calls you to do specific things. Like uh, when I was growing up, I was always wondering, it's like, Lord, what should I do? What am I good at? What can I do? What don't I? Shouldn't I? You know, all these things would run through my mind. And the last thing on my mind was to do what I'm doing today. Never thought that would be my call. People told me I could do this, and I laughed at them because if you knew me before this, <laughs> yeah, I got grades for speeches I never gave, and I was a happy camper. <laughs> I mean, it's just that getting up in front of people was not my thing at all. And so God knows how to call us to things that he's designed us for. And I don't know about you, but wouldn't it be miserable to live your whole life doing something you were never designed for? Amen. Amen. Think about that just for a moment. When God made you and he breathed life into you in your mother's womb, what, what breath of life came was a, a, a spot of life that continued to grow and grow and grow. And as you and I grow, it is important for us to learn to hear what it is he's saying because i got to figure out why I'm here. Everything around me is going to want to formulate my life. It's going to want to form me into something that they want me to be. But do I allow God to continue to speak life into me to a point where I can say, yes, Lord, I will do that because you called me to do that. Now, that's not always ministry. There's people that are called to be a mechanic or car called to be a carpenter. God's called you to do, be a truck driver. You, you can do whatever, whatever it is God's calling. God's calling is wide and broad. But there are times when God has a specific reason why he's called you. And we need to learn what that call is because that makes up the body of Christ doing things that God designed us for. There are calls in life that you don't want to answer, as I've said already. There are people that have great suggestions for your life. They might even look at you and say, hey, I've got, I think you'd be great at this. And God says, don't take that. That's not what you were made for. You might be good at it even. You might even be specifically great at certain things. And God will ask you to do something different. Let me give you an example. Do you remember when he called the disciples? What were they good at? 
fishing. Fishing. That's what they did for a living. Fishing. But God spoke into their life and he said, what? I need you to follow me. So what did they do? They didn't even take time to sell what they had. They dropped it and walked. Everything they owned, they left right there. They didn't even pick it up. They didn't try to sell it. They didn't even have time to give it away. He just said, come follow me. So they did. They left it all and they followed him. Think about that. Could you walk away for everything you've built in your life right now just because God said, come follow me? Just walk away from it and trust God to provide? Of course you could. Don't put God in a box that says he can't do that. But sometimes God will make arrangements with you to say, hey, you need to get rid of this. You need to get rid of this because this is all baggage from where I'm taking you. Because that call is specific. That call is, is something that you and I need to learn to recognize and hear. I don't know about you, but if the phone has ever rang at your house, you probably do one of three things. Number one, you ignore it. Number two, you look at the caller ID and see who it is. Or number three, you answer it. When I call, you don't ignore me. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, it's amazing. I never thought caller ID could be so valuable because I don't spend a whole lot of time talking to people I don't even know. I spend time talking to people who I do know. And that's really, really important. So when God calls, it's really, really important to listen. Let's go through some callings that came through the Scriptures. Turn over to uh, Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Let's begin reading in verse 1. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be, be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham left as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him, Abram was 75 years old when he set out to Haran. He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, and all the possessions that he had accumulated, and all the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out in the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. I don't know about you, but if you think about that for a second, that's quite a move. God came and spoke to Abram and said, this is what I want you to do. This is my promise to you. This is what I want you to do. I've called you. I've wanted you to do what I'm, I'm asking you to do. So the call of God literally uprooted Abram from where he was. He, he was able to take along everything that he had. He even got to take people with him. And he traveled to the land that God gave him and went from there. And then there came a division between him and Lot. And uh, obviously... Abram made a good decision. Turn over to 1 Kings, chapter 19. 1 Kings, chapter 19. The call of God is vital to your life. It's vital to everything that you need in life. 1 Kings, chapter 19. Look at verse 19. Talks about Elisha. Elisha was the one that followed Elijah. Look at what took place for Elisha. Verse 19 of 1 Kings 19. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of uh, that guy. And uh, he was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him, and Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and my mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come to, with you. Go back, Elijah replied, what have I done to you? So Elisha left him and went back. 
He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing, uh, burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and became his attendant. God called him to do that. As you know, it was vital that Elisha be there because the mantle that was on Elijah, he had to be with Elijah to get that mantle to go into his own life. Sometimes it's quite a costly price to go where God's going. But everything you've got can be replaced and with better stuff, with different stuff, with stuff that won't hinder you from being able to do what God's called you to do, but to give you things that you need for the work of the ministry. And we know that Elisha did that, that he had continued working, seeing the hand of God work in his life, but he had to let go of some things that he had in his life. He even went back and made an offering and, and took these animals and burned them and fed these people. And then he went and followed Elijah. Turn over to 1 Samuel. Just keep going. Isn't it interesting that all these, these uh, people, 1 Samuel 3, all these people heard God's voice. And they literally changed their life. The call of God is without repentance. And we'll look at that verse in just a little bit. Look at verse 1. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord. 1 Samuel 3. Eli, un, under Eli. In those days the word of the Lord was very rare and they were not many, there were not many visions. One night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Notice he didn't call Eli, he called Samuel. Brand new set of experiences for, e for Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you, go back and lie down. So he went and laid down. Again the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. And he said, my son, I did not call you, go back and lay down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. And the Lord called to Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. And Eli realized that it was the Lord that was calling the boy. So Eli told him, Go lie down. If he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood there calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel, and then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I'm about to do something new in Israel. And in the whole thing, he began to hear what God was saying. Sometimes there's a learning curve when you're hearing God. You don't always hear it correctly right away, so you, sometimes you bounce it off those you're with or those you're around, and you don't go to the world to hear God's voice. You don't call the psychic to see if it's God's voice. You go to people who are spiritual that know God's voice, that talk about understanding God's voice. You go to those that have taught you how to hear God's voice, and the reason that is is because they have your interest in mind that they want you to hear God. And if you don't learn to hear God, you're going you're gonna to find yourself in a spot where you're not going to be able to make some decisions. And the ones you make may not be the best decision of your life. So you and I have to learn how to hear what God is saying. To know His voice, it took Samuel just a little bit of work to get there. But he was faithful to come and ask about uh, who, was, who was talking to him. What, what am I hearing? And so then he began to share some really interesting things with Samuel. And uh, Eli was very honest with him and said, even if it's a hard thing, I want to hear it. And sometimes when God speaks, it's not always the easiest to hear. So be ready to hear what it is God's saying. Amen? Turn over to Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah 1. Right after Isaiah. Jeremiah 1. Look at verse 4. 
The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I'm only a child. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Now that's a wonderful word. The only word I get a question on is, why would you have to rescue me if I talk for you? <laughs> I don't know about you, but is that question that run in your mind? It's like, rescue? That means I'm in trouble. <laughs> Sometimes when you talk for God, people don't like it. They don't like what you have to say. They don't like what God has to say. But you have to be willing and able to hear God enough that when you speak, you're not adding your own physical flesh to what God said. Way too many times people add what God was saying when he really didn't say it. We have to be careful with that because how in the world is, is the world going to hear God's voice if the church doesn't even know his voice? Hello? He's going to use the church to do that. The other day when I was sleeping, the Lord woke me up to pray for you. How did you know that? I just know that I spent enough time with God that when he talks, I will listen day and night. Really? Wow, I've never done that. That's intriguing to me. Or you could ignore it and just walk away and say, Lord, I don't know why you never do anything with me. I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. You never do anything with me. Just listen to what he's saying. When he thinks you're ready to talk for him, he will get you going. I promise. Might not be the avenue that you are waiting for or looking for, but you will need to be ready to speak for God and be ready to pay the price it takes to speak for God. Not everybody's going to be offended by what you have to say. But there might be a few One last scripture. Go to Ezekiel. Take a right. Go to Ezekiel. Chapter 2. Ezekiel had a call of God on his life. I don't know about you, but I, I think it's really interesting that there's so many people in God's Word that had a call of God on their life. And honestly, this morning, I believe some of you are, your, your lives are about ready to change. You're, you're, you've been doing what you're doing for a while, but I believe God's ready to change some things. And that's up, that's up between God and you. I, I don't say that just because I want a response. I really believe that, that this morning as I was sitting with God and talking with Him about what to share with you, that He said that there's some, there's some people that have been wondering about where, what they're supposed to be doing, and He's, he's definitely calling and uh, will continue to call and... Uh, He'll call you again and again to make sure that you're hearing what he has to say. Ezekiel chapter 2, look at what he says. He said to me, son of man, verse 1, stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. Now, is, I think about this. God told him he couldn't lay down. He had to stand up. Now, does that seem weird? I don't know about you, but why would I have to stand up for God to talk to me? Let me, well, that's not the point. The point is, are you willing to do what he says? Are you willing to do whatever the Father says? Whatever God wants done, are you willing to do it? Because if you aren't willing to do what God says, pretty good chance he's not going to use you to talk to too many people because he can't trust you that you'll do what he asks. There is this relationship that you want to have with God that says, Lord, I don't care what you ask me to do. I don't care where you want me to go. I, at the end of it, I just know you're always right. Amen. <laughs> Put the default right at the beginning. I don't care how many questions I have. I don't care why it goes the way it does. I just know that in the end, you're right. You have to come to that place. Otherwise, you will question God because Ezekiel, he had to stand up to hear what God had to say. Think about that. That seems odd to me that that was the position that God had asked him to do that. But God can do those kind of things because that's what he wants. He said, Son of man, stand to your feet and I will speak to you. As he spoke, 
the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me, and they, are the, they and their fathers have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. And, whatever they, and whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. I don't know about you, but it's very, very interesting to me to say, you do not ever speak for God relying on how people well accepted it or didn't accept it. It doesn't matter. But you will stand before God that he fed you out of heaven the very words that you are to speak and you out of your spirit now have the opportunity to go and speak for God. Don't you dare give him more than what God gave you and don't you dare give him less than God gave you. It's that important. God's word is full of life why would we want to take our own flesh and our own understanding, rearrange it to fit what I think, and then serve it? Don't ever take what God serves you and rearrange it. What? Okay, come on up. We got to be able to hear you. Give me power. Give me power. I wasn't sure if it was meant for me or for Power, me. power. Cordless. Cordless. Different bank. <laughs> go ahead. Try it now. Is that it? No. You have to go to bank number one. Or is it? Right? Jerry, help him. Help, Jerry. Help. <laughs> help me, Lord. Help. I need somebody help. No, that was on my flesh, wasn't it? That's not of God. <laughs> See, all you, uh, you all listen to that music too. Uh, you got her? Try it. Is that it? Hello? There we go. There we go. Turn, him, turn her up. I wasn't sure whether the word was for me, so I didn't speak up earlier. There you go. I know, but don't worry about what um, you hear. I, I just believed earlier, actually, before Aaron spoke, that the Lord said, Who are you? Who are you? You are who my word says you are. Now get up and walk as you've been called to walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. You are called, get up and walk like I call, you're called to walk. Good. So now we have an example of God speaking, and now she just got delivered what God said, so what are you going to do with it? Because now it's up to you to do with what God said. She did her part. She's free from the responsibility. Now it's up to you who heard, what are you going to do with what God said? And you can say, well, that's a bunch of baloney. Oh, that's dangerous. Dangerous. For you to ever tell God what he said is a bunch of baloney is dangerous. That's why you never respond until you've prayed and said, Lord, what do you think? Okay? So hearing God's voice is vital and what God says is vital to be able to do exactly what he wants. Because Ezekiel was asked, he said, I'm sending you to a people. And he said, what did he say to them? Whether they listen or fail to listen, for doesn't matter. You go ahead and do not be afraid. Verse 6, and you, son of man, do not be afraid of them or their words. Do not be afraid Though briars and thorns are all around you and you live among scorpions, do not be afraid of what they say or be terrified by them. They, though they are a rebellious house, you must speak my words to them whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. But you, son of men, listen to what I say. Do not rebel like the rebellious house. Wow. Think about that. Very specific from God, to hear what God's saying so that I, in turn, can be the one that can be a vessel God uses to speak to people, whoever that might be. Now, you might not be speaking to a nation like Ezekiel was, but you might have a neighbor. You might have a co-worker. 
You might have a family member. You might have somebody you don't even know that, I've I, I got to tell this story real quick. I spoke at Crew about, it might be almost three year, three, three year, three weeks ago, and there was a person that came and talked to me about some specific things. I was talking to another person that lives way on the other side of Devil's Lake, and they were walking into Dunn Brothers Coffee, and they said before they walked in, Lord, if there's anybody that needs a talking to or need me to say something, I want to talk to them. So they walked in, n one person sitting in there. And all of a sudden, God began to speak to that person. You need to go talk to them and say this to them. For the next half hour, that person got to hear the very same things I told that person at crew. And they were wondering if it was God. Yes, it was God. It's a matter how God can direct your day, no matter where you're at, no matter what's going on. So the thing of it is, is that you and I need to learn how to hear what God's saying. Why? Because God has a plan in reaching people. Then he says in verse 9 of Ezekiel, and then I think we'll be close to being done here. Then I looked and I saw the hand stretched out to me. In it was a scroll which he unrolled before me. On both sides of it were written the words of lament and mourning and woe. And he said to me, chapter 3, verse 1, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll. Then go and speak to the house of Israel. I, so I opened my mouth and he gave me the scroll to eat. This is one of the things that I want to emphasize before we're done. Don't be the kind of Christian that is so finicky that you won't eat what God is serving. Don't tell God what he should feed you. That'd be like your kids coming up to you and saying, Mommy, Daddy, I don't like what you've made me. We've got to make something else. And you know what I would have heard when I, if I'd have ever done that? You can go out there and eat with the cows if you want to. All I care about what you got right here is all we're getting, and so you better eat it if you like it, whether you like it or not. That's how I was raised. But anyway, so here's the very thing I want you to remember as a believer. No matter what comes out of this pulpit, if it's God, key word, if it's God, you better be willing to eat it. If it's not, I don't expect you to eat it at all. I expect you to raise up a ruckus and say, that's not from God. God would never say that. I expect that. Because that tells me you know what God's Word says. You know God's voice. Now, this isn't an opinion thing. So God's not looking for your opinion or my opinion. He's not looking for that. He's looking for people that guard what His Word says. And so the reality is, is this, that whatever God serves me on a daily basis, if I give him opportunity to serve me, if I give him opportunity to serve me, if I give him opportunity to serve me, uh, did you catch what I'm saying? That means you have to be willing to eat whatever he offers you. It's not a matter of, Lord, I don't like that. Uh-uh. That doesn't work in God's kingdom. It works here in our world because we have a menu this big with this many options, and we can order whatever we want when we go out to eat for the most part, or else we don't go there. But the reality is, is that when God wants to serve His people to give them things such as food and life, I don't get to choose whether it's good or not. I've got to learn to eat what God is serving me, what He's offering me. And in doing that, then I'll have the ability to speak for Him because I took what God gave me and now He's asking me to send it back out again to give it to others that absolutely need to hear what God is saying. I give what God gave me. I don't give my opinion. I don't give what I think. I give what God served me. I give what God gave me. Why? Because then God is represented. 
So then you begin to understand why God calls, why He called you, and why He's still calling you daily to do things on an everyday basis. So with that, this morning, is God asking you to do something you've never done before? Let it be exciting. I'm not questioning whether what you're doing isn't of God. I'm not saying that at all because God will ask you to keep doing the same thing until He calls you to do something different. And that's okay. Because God calls, He called us to do certain things, and He's still calling every single day. He's calling us. He's saying, Jeff, I need you to do this. I need you to do this. I need you to do this. And sometimes you end up doing the same thing for over years before He calls you to do something else. And that's okay. So learn to hear what God is calling you to do. And remember to say yes to Him when He calls you because if there anybody had, anybody had an, a legitimate excuse about telling God you don't have the ability, I had it. I had no ability to get up and do what I'm doing today. None. I married a woman that can do it. My wife, she's awesome at doing this. She's done this all the way through her life. Me, not a chance. Uh-uh. So the reality is, is that when God calls, you just learn to say yes. So let's pray. But as we pray, I don't want you to be distracted this morning or overtired. I want you to be aware that God might just call you. He might speak something very specific to you. Because I believe that the calling of God are without repentance. He doesn't say, I'm sorry, I, I got the wrong person. No, he doesn't do that. When he calls us to do something, he, he wants us to do it. Father, this morning we want to thank you and praise you that the opportunity once again to serve you, to bless you, to honor you, and to lift up your name. That's why we're here today. We're not here so I can be happy. We're not here so I can be made comfortable. We're here to honor the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We're here to make sure that God gets everything He rightfully deserves today. And in doing that, Lord, Your directions and Your instructions come to our life. So, Lord, if there's things that need to be rearranged in my life today, and You pray the prayer for Yourself. If there's things in my life that need to be rearranged today, I give You full permission to do it. You can change my job, you can change my house, you can change my, where I live, you can change the state I'm in, you can stay the country I'm in. You can do whatever it is that needs to be done, Lord. I give you permission to do that because I know that you called me to do something. And Lord, I want to hear what you're calling me to do. I want to know your voice so well, Lord, that no matter what noise is going on in the world, I still hear your calling. No matter what situations are right or wrong in my life today, I want to be able to still hear your calling. And so, Lord, I thank you that the Holy Spirit will continue to speak clearly this day to each and every one's life, from the youngest to the oldest, because even my wife was called at the age of five to do exactly what she's doing today. So, Lord, I thank you that our kids are not too young to hear your voice. So, Lord, make that calling and election sure. Make it powerful today. Lord, if there's no reason for change today, thank you for the confidence and the peace about doing exactly what we're doing right now. Thank you for the confidence of knowing that. So that when that day of calling does come to change some things, we're ready to change. So, Father, thank you for what you're going to do in our midst. Thank you for the lives that are going to be continually changed because of Jesus Christ, because of the work that you designed for each one to do. And, Lord, I just want to thank you today for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said. This morning I, I, I waited until now to share this because I wasn't sure it was God. There's two miracles that took place this morning while we were worshiping, and I don't know who you are, and I don't know what they are, but there's two miraculous miracles that took place this morning. 
So whatever's been going on in your life, go home and check it out. Because there's two things. God undeniably, I mean, he's told me all the way through the service. And I said, that's not something I just want to throw out and think, hey, that's a good thing to throw out. I want to make sure, you know. So there's two miracles. Things that couldn't be done before or are done now. Okay? So enjoy. Enjoy.